see the thing, it's a science and the science still works even now. So you can't sit there and go away from it. Well, I always think that like, it's like boxing is a lot like life. So there's like a number component that's a science. And then there's a part of it that's almost like fate or an intangible. You either got it or you don't, because some guys are great boxers and they get in the ring and it still doesn't matter. They fight someone who's vastly less talented and that person wants it more or they have something about them that can just win a fight. And that's what I'm drawn to is the chaos is that you can't just look at a fight and definitively believe no matter what the fight is that, you know, the outcome, unless you truly know that's a special fight. Correct. Absolutely. 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 And that's one of the things on any given night, anybody could be the better man that night. And you can't just always go, oh, yeah, well, I like him. He, he's, he's more famous. He has more Instagram followers. He's going to win. It, it doesn't work like that in boxing. So. So let me give you the perfect example of that. And I'm going super boxing nerd. So you're going to love this. Andrew Galata is probably the perfect <laughs> example on every given night, because here's this truck driver from kind of obscurity who for some reason couldn't not punch below the belt, but he, he, yeah. Like, I think that that must've been like a self-sabotage mental. That's thing. what I, the, the few, the few fights I've seen, it was like, maybe he just, he just, he just wanted to get out the fight. Like that, that was his way of getting out of the fight. I mean, cause he's, he's done it in quite a few fights. And it's like, now you're becoming the, the low blow guy. Like nobody wants to see that, but. I mean, they, they hyped him up and maybe the pressure was too much for him. Who knows? I mean, I've never really, I've never really sat down and looked like, oh, well, they were doing this for him and they, it was too strong of a, a thing for him. But to sit there and be always low blowing, that, that's like, you kind of like went out. It, 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 there's something mental to it. I just remember in Legendary Nights on HBO, they put a piece of tape on the heavy bag to indicate where the low blow line was. And you know correct, that correct, that's correct. an issue when they put tape on the bag to say, don't hit below this because you get disqualified. I think that you hit on it. I think when he fatigued in a fight, he didn't want to get that get back. He wanted to find a way exactly. and then still feel like, hey, I won the fight. This is in a street fight. I would have won it. Yeah, it's, I mean that that like you said, like you touched on it. When fatigue, when fatigue sets in, it's like all right, I didn't. Or if you didn't train as hard as you're supposed to train, or train like you're supposed to, I'm tired. All right, I'm trying to get out of this way the best way I can. Like you don't. I mean, I mean, some people look at it differently than what I would look at it, but I, I think that you can't go out like that. Like you still got to go out as if you know what I'm a fighter. I got to be professional about the situation. I got to fight. You don't want to just like automatically. He was just throwing low blows out of nowhere. But I've also been, I've been in the ring a lot with a lot of sparring. And I know that a lot of guys, like I've been hit below the belt a lot of times, but I don't get mad because I know I'm tall and guys aren't used to fighting a taller person. So when they dip down low, they dip down lower than what they actually have to sometimes. And they don't realize, they don't understand the distance of how far they got to go down. So I don't never get mad. I just try to make sure I work that it doesn't happen towards to me as much as possible. So, okay. That's, that's a great astute observation. So what is, do you drop your hand maybe a little bit lower to make sure the crown jewels don't get hit? No, I try to move my feet. I try to move out the way so they don't even hit me period. Like it's, it's been time. Like I said, I, it's, it's hard to find a lot of sparring. So it's like, when you find sparring, you find guys, your weight, they might not be six, three, six, four. They might be six foot and they might be used to fighting guys at six foot. So when they're, when they're go, dipping down and throw a body shot or anything like that, they dip it down a little bit further. Then it would have to be on a guy that's, I'm 6'5". So I'm 6'5". They didn't want to dip down that far. And when they do it, it's like, oh, wait, wait, hold on. Let me, let me, you know, move out the way a little bit more. Let me, I can see certain stuff coming. So it's like, all right, I know you're trying to go for a, a low body punch or a low, low to belt punch, not meaning it, but it's going to happen. Great insight. Before I get you out of here, because you've been a great guest, let's go, let's create a headline. Who do you, do you think, is the best 